StyleCop started out as an internal tool. Microsoft used it to make sure that their own code followed their rules for best practices. And now it's been released into the community so you can analyze your code against these same rules, add your own rules, turn their rules on and off. At the moment it is a C Sharp only tool. Who knows what will happen in the future. But I have some C Sharp code here that I'm going to subject to uh, an analysis by StyleCop. It's on the Tools menu. And when I run it, I get 75 warnings, which sounds outrageous for such a, a pretty small demo. But many of the uh, warnings are actually coming from code that I didn't write. Um, let me scroll down a little here. You can see in the designer and also in the assembly info. These were generated by the file new project. And if you want, you can think of them as an argument between the teams that wrote the style rules and the teams that wrote the wizards that generated the code for me. I'm really just going to pay attention to the things that I can do something about. So if I scroll through here, I find some complaints about spacing. I'm just going to double click them like a compiler error down in this window to go to that line. And you can see that what it's complaining about is that I don't have a space after my plus. And in fact it's making the very same complaint on the next line and down here. So after I make those three changes, I'm not going to save my file. It's still flagged as unsaved. I'm not going to rebuild. I'm just going to run StyleCop again. And now we go down to 72 warnings. So it's actually parsing your unsaved, uncompiled code. Now sometimes it's not obvious what it's complaining about or why the thing it's complaining about is wrong. So you know it's, it's clearly a matter of style, having spaces around your um, around your operators, fine, maybe it makes it a little bit more readable. But some of the complaints are um, a little harder to necessarily follow. So here we have uh, statements or elements wrapped in curly brackets must be followed by a blank line. And what it's complaining about is that my functions are all smucked up together and don't have blank lines after them. Now maybe I like it like that. So I could fix it in quotes by entering a blank line in here or I could say, I don't like that rule. Stop doing that rule. If I want to say that, I can go in here on the project properties, there's a style cop settings, and drill into the layout rules related to line spacing and find this one that says closing curly bracket must be followed by a blank line and just turn it off. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that the line spacing becomes bolded and this bracket actual rule becomes bolded. And those are both to help make it really simple to see where someone's turned off the sort of default lines, default rules. So if I say OK and I run the test again, we get a lot less errors. And that's um, helping us to really only have to deal with ones that are real. Now here are some. This function doesn't have a documentation header. OK, that's probably a pretty good point. It probably should. Um, but I'm not going to necessarily sit down in the middle of my work week and write documentation headers for all the functions that are missing them. So I can create a work item, assuming I'm using Team Foundation Server, create a bug, and it will actually give it the, the heading that it was uh, related to build warnings. And if I want to copy the body of the error, maybe I actually take several of these and copy them all into the same bug, so you can see the file name and the line number uh, in each one of the errors to make it simpler for the developer to find the functions that don't have documentation headers. Perhaps in practice the developer would just run the style cop again themselves, but it's certainly simple enough to copy and paste those in. Now sometimes the rules are just a pure matter of, of style, like whether or not you're going to use Hungarian notation, how you're going to use your casings, um, keeping your using statements in order, those sorts of things. But some of them are um, a little bit more obscure. And here's one that I want to draw to your attention. It says use string.empty rather than quote quote. Um, I'm starting something with an empty string, running through a loop and tacking more strings onto the end of it. And it says eh, don't start with, with just quote quote, start with string.empty. And if you have no idea why, you can say show error help and it will bring up a page that explains that when you do that we actually put a literal into the code much like this space that's actually you know 
taking up some uh, some of the room inside your assembly and that the static uh, empty string that can be shared throughout your application is just a better choice than the quoted uh, double quotes. Good. So I can make that change and nicely enough with most of these they tell you how to fix it so you can actually copy string.empty right from inside the help and put it there in place of the empty quotes. And if I now scan again, we should have one less error. And we do. So in this way, you can work your way through your code, uh, fixing it to conform to the style guidelines that come with the, the COP, or uh, adjusting the style guidelines so they react to your reality. You can add your own rules, and you can take those settings about which rules are on, which rules are off, as well as your extra rules, and share them around within the team. And you can hook this into your build system as well, so that it gets run on, on your nightly builds or if you trigger a build on every check-in. And it should result in it being less work if you don't let the missing documentation or the bad naming conventions pile up, then you don't get the argument that it's going to take a day to go and fix them all because they got fixed as you went along. And you have a consistent application. Your code base is following all your naming conventions, best practices, and general style rules. It's going to be easier to maintain. You're going to have less wasted time among your developers. Certainly a lot better than looking for these rule violations by hand in a code review. So give it a try.